Hello, this is going to be a quick video where I'm going to uh, describe what to me is the model view controller principle and how it applies to actors or uh, different processes in lab view. Uh, but before I did this, I looked up online uh, to try to get better information on model view controller and got a bit confused by all the different definitions. So I'm instead going to call it a uh, new name, controller model view. And that's to show what I think is the most important thing about this concept which is that though you might have a user interface uh, which is controlling your hardware or whatever you're dealing with in your application, uh, the user interface is really two parts. One is it's a controller and the controller affects things. And two, it's a view, it view shows things. So there's sort of a bi-directional, uh, there's, two, two, there's two ways to, to user interface, uh, in to the application and out. And if we have, uh, so we call these things controller and view and the actual thing that's affecting is the model. The model is sort of the model of the real world. So it's, it's the state data uh, that represents whatever it is we're doing. So the whole point of the controller model view principle is the controller doesn't set the view. The controller makes requests against the model, tries to change it or do something, and the model independently updates the view. So the information goes in and then it comes out. And one of the big advantages of this is that there's only one model, but you can have multiple controllers and views. Uh, and if one controller changes the model, it updates both views. So uh, the views always represent the model, never get out of sync. So let's look at that. Uh, in our previous, uh, our previous demo, uh, we built two actors, a top level actor that, control, that, that launches and controls an instrument actor. And I kind of fleshed this out a little bit from where we left it. Uh, if I start it, it launches the instrument. Uh, the instrument starts taking data, and data is uh, sent back to the top level. And I've added a control here called the amplitude that just changes the amplitude uh, up and down. And I can control it from both things. And you see how the amplitude, as a control, is a single thing, but it's actually doing two things. One, it's a control. It's actually affecting the model, which is our, our little simulated data. But also it's a view because it's telling us the amplitude is one, right? Or the amplitude is two. It's actually a view. And the fact that these two things uh, always reflect the same information is important. So let's see how we did that. Stop my application. Uh, first we look here, remember before, you can always run these actors by themselves. That's very important as far as debugging. Uh, so we're gonna, so uh, let's have a look. Uh, here we have an amplitude control. And the amplitude control triggers a, a, a value change event. This is our controller where we set the model. The model is actually this information here, these settings. This is where the state data is. This is what we're affecting. Uh, so we set the, uh, set the value and we call some kind of code, uh, which is basically the method of the model. Uh, here the method is just to do some kind of in-range and coerce to keep, the, uh, keep reasonable values for the amplitude. And then the view for this control is setting it by a, uh, a uh, local variable. The key thing is that the model sets the local variable, the control doesn't. Even though when we change the control from one to two, we are sort of setting the view momentarily, the real thing that sets the view is this local variable. If we run this, I can show you, if we keep increasing, once we get to three, we can't go any higher. And that's because we're actually doing the in range and coerce and setting the view here. Now to do this from our top level actor, uh, remotely, as it were, uh, we've got to do the same kind of thing as a message. We have a set amplitude message, where again, in the message contains the amplitude and we call the same code after. And then in the code that sets the model, we uh, notify about the current amplitude. And this is how we get the information back to our view in the top level. So looking in here, when we change amplitude, we fire off a message, set amplitude. We don't do anything else, we just fire off a message and, and, and leave it. Uh, and then uh, when the uh, uh, information comes back, it comes back through a, a message to us. If you look here, when we started our instrument, we have to, we have to uh, register to receive this information. So when we start up our instrument actor, uh, we send it a registration message. In this case, we register for its reading, that's what we're using before, and its amplitude. And here I'm using a prefix, uh, uh, message translation. Uh, remember before we used relabel messages to relabel it. Here we're using a prefix, so we add the instrument one prefix 
to both these messages. And that, if you remember, makes this much more readable because we can really see where this information is coming from. So here the instrument one sends the amplitude, we read the message, parse the data, and send it again to a local variable. That's how we uh, uh, connect the two things. Uh, one last thing while, while we're here, uh, just a quick preview of a tool called a Messenger Live or the Actor Manager. Uh, this runs a little debug tool that looks at all the actors in memory. So here we have our project, top level actor that we started by ourselves. It launched the instrument actor. And the instrument actor is actually using the metronome actor. Uh, if you look in the instrument actor here, click on this block diagram. That was the little metronome that we started in order to send ourselves the metronome tick messages to take readings. And if you were, for example, to look at this, normally we can't see its user, its uh, front panel, and it's not and thus not its block diagram. But we can actually use this tool to click on and open the block diagram uh, of the metronome. And you can have a look at that if you want. Uh, it's actually an example of a queue-based actor. It doesn't use user events; it uses a queue. It's also an example of a two-loop actor where there's a top loop which is the message handler, kind of like the manager. And then the actual work is done in, this, in a, a helper loop called the ticker loop, which is just focused on doing its job of, of uh, timing. Anyway, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.